Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. So I want to talk to you today about five things that are going to set you apart from all the other violinists. These are kind of things that I talk about all the time, um, but the more I talk about them, the more you guys understand them. And you know, it's like anything when I used to teach privately, I used to go over the same sort of things, sometimes going back to basics and all that kind of thing. Just these are just the very fundamentals and the very basics that are going to get you off on good stead. Otherwise, it's going to put you in some very bad habits and then trying to solve these problems later down the line is a lot more complicated. So before we go any further, I just want to make a quick little announcement, if I may. My new website has now gone live. So as some of you may know, I know a lot of you would have been patrons of mine, but we are no longer with Patreon. And over the last couple of months, we've just been having, we've, it's, it's just, we, we've just not really been enjoying anything with Patreon. For the last few months, we've been having a lot of issues, a lot of ongoing issues with, with Patreon. Um, we know that the site isn't particularly um, conducive to good viewing and a lot of you have complained that the site itself isn't very good, you know, and, and I've been at the mercy of all of that. I've tried my best to kind of do workarounds to help you guys out, to make things easy, but, you know, it was just a very difficult side to go go through. Lots of things weren't really where I wanted them. I, I had absolutely no control over any of that. Then we've had other going ongoing issues with them, server issues and all that kind of thing. So over the last few weeks, my team and I have been developing a brand new website that serves a similar purpose to Patreon, but it's just going to be better. It's like my website 2.0. So we are now no longer with Patreon, but everything that was on Patreon, all of that sheet music, the backing tracks, the piano sheet music, violin sheet, everything that was on there has now been moved over to my brand new website. I'll put a link to that directly underneath. So it's pretty much gonna work in the same way as it did with Patreon. There's gonna be $10 subscription a month, which you can cancel at any time and join any time, that kind of thing. Um, but the only difference is, is that we did have the $5 subscription with Patreon, but we didn't really get a lot of take up with that. So it wasn't really worth having that. So we scrapped that. So we've now just got the $10 membership that allows you access to you know, the main bulk of the site. The other thing is, is that I have full 100% control. So if there's something you don't like about it or you want me to make some improvements, add this, take away that, whatever, you can let me know and I can try my best to do that because I have full control over that now. And also the other good thing about it is there is now a community forum. There wasn't really anything like that in, in Patreon. You know, people could put comments down or, you know, make a statement or something, but you know, there wasn't really like a community forum where people can kind of make posts on what strings to buy, uh, bow hold, violin bow hold, uh, vi violin hold. Um, are you guys having any particular difficulties with any, with any pieces? And, you know, just reaching out to other fellow musicians and violinists as well. So I am going to be moderating that or myself and my team are going to be moderating that. I'll be, I'll be coming in as well. And, you know, if I see that anyone's struggling or they've got any questions or anything like that, I'll be coming in and kind of privately stepping in and helping out and everyone can kind of, you know, it's just going to be a nice place that everybody can kind of step in and learn from. So yes, I just wanted to let you know all about my brand new website linked underneath um, that is now operational as of the time of making this video. So five things that set you apart from other violinists. So as I said at the beginning, this is just kind of rudimentary stuff, the fundamentals, the things that people I think often don't revisit and don't go back and do. So number one, violin hold. The amount of times I see people holding the violin in front of you, uh, 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 needs to be held out to the side. So you wanna be looking about, think of the clock, 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, whatever. So 12, is obviously a no. So imagine I'm, I'm facing directly the camera here at 12 o'clock. My body is facing 12 o'clock, as you can see. Now, if I put the violin under my chin, kind of on my shoulder at 12 o'clock, it's pretty much gonna be sitting here on you know the top of my chest there. And that's not that's really not where we want the violin. That, that's all kinds of wrong. Now, when you put it out to the side, it's, it's gonna sit on the shoulder. And if you put it out to nine o'clock, so this would be your nine o'clock here, then it, it's too far out to the side. You know, my head is, is too is too far that way. So I don't really want that either. 
Then if we think of a clock, 11, sorry, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock and 12 o'clock. I, at the risk of sounding pedantic, I like to be around about somewhere between 10 and 11. So 10.30, wherever the small hand would be if the time said 10.30. So nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. So 12 o'clock, no, 11 o'clock, too close to 12. 10, maybe a little bit out for, too far out to the side. Nine, absolutely not. So sort of somewhere between the 10 and the 11. So that's where you need to hold the violin. Now, some of you might wanna have a shoulder rest underneath here. Depends on how much gap you've got here. I don't use a shoulder rest. I haven't used a shoulder rest in around about 30 years and I'm not about to start using one. For me, the violin just sits nicely on my shoulder, on here, so it's now sitting on my shoulder. I move my chin into the position and just simply sort of just put it down. So I don't have, that's how much room I have there between kind of my shoulder and my chin. I do bring my shoulder up a touch just to kind of, just to hold the violin, and, but it doesn't restrict any of my movement. It's not as if my shoulder's up in the air like that. It's not doing any of that. My shoulder is just lightly coming up just to kind of grip the instrument. My shoulder comes up, my chin comes comes down, and I'm just gripping the instrument. But I'm not I'm I'm not ever playing to this kind of extreme. This is quite uncomfortable because I've always always got my left hand sort of holding it up. So the shoulder is there as a support. If you if you're not comfortable there, you can put a cloth. Um, you can use. I would suggest you just get hold of a shoulder rest that kind of thing, and that will bridge that gap. So make sure your violin is in the right place. That is step number one. Number two, bow, bow hold. Now I've made numerous videos about this, so you've got to get your bow hold right. I will link to a video underneath of where I'm talking more in detail about how to hold the violin and also bow hold as well. I don't want to take up too much time in this video because I've already made multiple videos on bow hold, but suffice to say, the little gap of wood that you have there in between this kind of black piece, or maybe you've got a silver piece there, depending on your bow, and the frog, you should have a bit of a gap there. That's where your thumb is going to go. The thumb must stay bent. Middle two fingers sort of go either side of the thumb, index finger, and your little finger. Now this is the way I hold the bow. This is the way I teach the bow. I have a hybrid between the sort of Franco-Belgian bow grip and the Russian grow bit, bow grip, <laughs> bit of a mouthful there. Uh, so the Franco-Belgium is more kind of upright from what I understand, Russian is very, very tilted. I'm kind of halfway between the two. I like it because my index finger is a little bit more tilted, which means my little finger just nicely sits there. The, the, the Belgium is slightly further up like this. So actually if I do my, my, my bow grip, so I would say that knuckle there on my index finger does kind of tuck into the wood of the bow that you can sort of see there. Now, if I keep everything where it is, but I just lift it up, can you see now my little finger is, is bent? Now, I, quite, I find that quite uncomfortable. So everything is now kind of a little bit more upright and lifted up, but I just prefer to be a little bit more tilted. That is just the way my hand is. But if your teacher tells you something different or you've seen something different or whatever, that's fine. That's also fine. There are more than, there's more than one bow hold. They're all going to be right as long as ultimately you can do all of the techniques um, available to you on the violin. It isn't a problem. This is just mine. This is how I do it. Therefore, that's obviously the way I teach it. I don't really tend to teach it any other way. I like it because I feel like it does enable my fingers to move a little bit more. I don't have a problem with that little finger. A lot of people say they have problem bending their little finger or it keeps slipping off or they don't know what to do with it. Now, by kind of tilting a bit more like I do, your little finger just tilts enough so that it is just kind of perching on the end and it doesn't need to do anything. If your fingers are more upright, it does present itself as a little bit more of a problem. But as I said, you know, that's just how I, that's just how I hold the bow and how I, how I teach the bow. Okay, number three, where you bow is very important because that's gonna give you sound. So how you're holding the violin is going to contribute. If you're holding to the front, you're not gonna be able to do anything else. If you're not holding the bow right, you're not gonna sound nice and also where your bowing is important. Now you wanna be bowing in the middle, more or less in the middle between the bridge and the fingerboard, and you wanna keep that bow nice and straight there. 
So what I would suggest is that you just practice playing in front of a mirror. And again, I've got a video where I talk about this more in depth, but you don't wanna be playing on the fingerboard and you don't wanna be playing right over the bridge. I'm not gonna do that because that sets my teeth on edge. If you bow over the fingerboard, it's the sound isn't bad, but it isn't, it's just not very nice because the further down towards the fingerboard, the flatter everything goes as well. So if you're playing down here, you're gonna be very, it's gonna be very difficult to isolate any strings because everything is sort of a lot flatter. So the optimum place to bow is gonna be roughly kind of in the middle and you want to practice keeping your bow nice and straight. Now what you don't wanna bow, if I very quickly go into it, what you don't wanna be doing is bowing like this. So you don't want your, your right arm to bow any further back than your actual back itself. So no going out here. So in line with your body, this is as far out as you're gonna be going. And all you're gonna be doing is just bowing from that elbow there, okay? So again, I'll link to a video in more detail where I'm going through that and I'll put that in the description bar underneath. I've kind of touched on number four here and this is how to bow as well. So again, how to bow is gonna be from the elbow. So what you wanna be doing is using the elbow and the wrist to help you and we don't wanna be flapping around like this. So remember we're playing the violin and we're not sawing a piece of wood. So as soon as I start moving my arm back, you can see what's happening to the violin. Imagine if I was playing. We don't want to be swinging. We just want to be playing. So there you can see the minute I play from the elbow, this bow remains straight. And number five, slightly more advanced with the wrist and the fingers. So that means that now we know where we're bowing. So we're not bowing here, we're not bowing here, we're bowing there. We know how we're bowing. So we're bowing from the elbow here and we're keeping it nice and straight here. So we're not doing any of this kind of stuff, but also now we can use the fingers and the wrist. So when we're bowing, we can start to incorporate the wrist. So when you're bowing down, your wrist starts to go down. When you're bowing up, your wrist comes up. That's gonna give you nice transition changes when you're changing the bow. So what I see most often is people just bowing. So they've got the whole elbow thing down and that's absolutely fine, but there's no movement in the wrist at all. So when they're bowing down, it's still sort of very, it's still very wooden, it's still very, very solid, isn't it? But if you're bowing and your wrist is moving, sorry, I know I'm just off camera here. And as you're coming up, the wrist starts to come up. That's gonna give you a nice transition so that when you're ready to go down, it gives you a nice smooth transition. So can you sort of see that? So as I'm bowing down, my wrist is going down as I'm bowing up. That wrist starts to come up and through. So that's probably a slight exaggeration there and in real terms, I'm not actually kind of doing that. But when I'm bowing down, my wrist is going down. So I've got like a nice little kind of ridge in there. And when I'm bowing up, that wrist is coming up and through rather than just keeping all of this where it is and just simply bowing from the elbow. So you've got to think you've got the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist and the fingers. So you can start to kind of flex the fingers a little bit as well as you get more advanced with that, but it's all uh, shoulder, elbow, wrist, knuckle, and then the very ends of your fingers and everything should be, should be flowing quite nicely. So when you've got your wrist moving up and down, you can then start to sort of move your fingers so these are the five things that are gonna set you apart from other violinists. As I say, there are so many people that don't think about all the kind of very simple things. They don't get reminded. I see other students, you know, that are playing on social medias and I think, you know, their teachers aren't saying anything about it. You know, their, their posture is down, their bowing is not very good. Generally, all of those things put together are not gonna give you a very nice sound. So if you are quite new to this and you're wondering why you know, maybe you're getting a bit frustrated and you're wondering why you don't quite sound as good as you think you sound or as good as you wanna sound, just go back to those five basic elements and I guarantee you, you'll have one or two 
maybe even three things that you're not doing quite right. Anything from like holding down, so maybe you're holding at the right place, you know, between the 10 and 11, but your violin's down here, or your violin's up there. Something, you know, you want it flat, nice and kind of flat like a table, horizon level. You know, it could be that. It could be go back and look at your bow hold. Maybe your, your bow arm's too stiff. So it's all accumulative. So if your, your violin hold isn't there, if your bow hold isn't there, you're not gonna be able to bow very well. If your violin's not there, you're not gonna be bowing in the right place. So can you see how it all has a knock-on kind of ripple effect? These are things that you need to be telling yourself time and time and time again. And I know that most of you don't have a teacher, and this is where I come, and this is why I make these videos, to constantly remind you like a teacher. If I make these videos often enough, then enough people are gonna be seeing it, and enough people are gonna be going over those basic fundamentals. And even if you think you've been playing for a year go back and check things playing for a year is nothing in the grand scheme of things you know and there's no shame in going back and correcting things you want to stay good you want to stay focused you want to stay kind of um, technically aware you want to increase your skill and you're not going to be able to do any of that if you don't have those five fundamentals down so anyway, check out all the other details that I've got on those specific um, key points. I'll have them linked underneath. My new website it, uh, will be linked underneath as well. And also my 1 to 30 violin course uh, that I know most of you ha uh, have heard about by now. But my 1 to 30 violin course takes you from a complete beginner to um, a guaranteed, intermediate, well-accomplished level. And that will all be linked in the description bar underneath. So Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.